Hello everyone, welcome to Open Source Code. This is our seventh video in the GNU slash Linux tutorial series. With this video, we are going to start exploring the graphical user interface and how to work with the graphical user interface. Before we proceed with this video, let's just recall what we have done till now. In the previous videos, we have discussed about the GNU slash Linux system structure. What is a shell? What is the concept of a shell? What is the file system hierarchy or directory structure? Which directories you should be knowing immediately? What is the file naming convention? The concept of administrator, generic user and pseudo users. So with this basic information up, we will be able to proceed further. Now before we dive into actually the usage of the graphical interface, I would like to discuss a few things that would really help you in working with the Linux environment or rather in any kind of computer environment later on. So let's just discuss those points. Okay, the first thing I want to discuss is the concept of a file. Everyone has heard the term file. This is a common term everyone uses, save it as a file, open this file, open that file. So file is a concept in a way the computer is going to store the information or data that you have created. Files have different formats. In Linux or Unix type systems, the files are classified into two, two types of files. One is a text file, another is a binary file. Now, in general, a very simple way to identify this is if you open the file in a text editor and you can see the regular characters which you can somehow identify, that is usually considered as a text file. If you see garbage, it is a binary file. For the time being, we'll just keep this thing in mind. So, file is a mechanism which is used by computer to store your data or rather point to your data. So whatever you have created, it stores somewhere on the computer and the file name that you give, that is the way how you can retrieve that information. The next point that I would like to discuss is that use the correct terms. Now, how this is going to help you and what exactly I mean by use the correct terms. Now, I have often seen people using the product name and nomenclature for identifying different things. Okay, That is useful if you are specifically working for a product. But if you start talking and thinking in terms of terminology rather than a product name or a specific product, it will become very easy for you to work on any environment. Let us say, the most interesting thing to date that I have heard by people is everyone refers to a presentation as PPT. If not everyone, most of them. So what exactly is PPT? Well, if you go to chemistry 101, it is precipitate, something which is absolutely useless. So rather than going into this kind of uh, usage of product names or extensions or something, start using the correct terminologies. For example, terminology is office suit. Okay, it's a tool, a office suit, where you will get some applications for three different works generally. First is word processing. Fine, generally people say, give me a dot doc file or something. No. We are not interested in whether you are giving me a doc file or something. If you want to do word processing, you need a tool for word processing. Now, what tool we will be using is a different criteria. But if your concept of what you want to do is word processing is clear, it will be easier for you to look out for a tool for word processing. Now, if you are looking for a specific terminology like I want to create a doc file, then you will end up going back to the zero where you started from. 
Similarly, if you want to create spreadsheets, look for a tool which can help you creating spreadsheets. If you want to make presentations, look for a tool which is there for presentations. There are multiple tools for all these things. Another example is like file manager. Look for a file manager. Don't look for explorer or something like that. Another thing that people say is I want Chrome, Firefox or something. If you want to go to the internet, browse the internet, it is referred as a web browser. So what I'm trying to put over here is we are looking forward to talk in terms of terminology. So we will be using some product, but if you keep these things in mind, it will become much more easier for you to work in the environment. Okay. So what next? The next thing that we are going to discuss is the GUI, the graphical user interface. Again, it's a user interface, as I said. People who would be interested later on going into the command line interface, you have to keep your minds open. We are using one interface, we will be shifting to another interface to do our work. So, a graphical interface is a graphical representation of your commands, applications, tools that you can run usually by clicking on an icon. Now, in case of Linux, we have certain applications or we call servers which provide us this interface between the hardware and the user. So not going into the details, a GUI usually consists of something what we call as a window manager and the window manager is responsible for drawing those windows, positioning them, closing, opening of the windows. Window manager plus applications, certain distributions provide you a combination of these things which we refer as a desktop. So, the desktop which we are going to work on our distribution for this series will be XFCE. So, you might be using any other uh, desktop. There are a lot of desktops. There is GNOME, there is KDE, there is Mate, there is Cinnamon and a lot of them are there. But again, as I said, if you keep your minds open, it's not going to be difficult. All of them are going to give you a starting point. In some places, it's going to be on the lower left corner. In some places, it's going to be on the upper side and so on. But finally, you will have access to your applications through some location or the other. As I said earlier, what you need to keep in mind is you need to look for the tool for a particular work and not a product. So if you keep this in mind, it will be much more easier for you to work with your graphical user interface. So with this, I'll stop here and we will proceed into our graphical user interface. So let's continue. Okay, so this is our welcome screen. When you start Mint, you will get this welcome screen. So as I said in our, my earlier video, you may be using a different uh, distribution or a different uh, desktop where you'll get a similar environment. In case of Mint, we get this welcome screen. Please go ahead and uh, go through these steps for the time being and uh, let this be like this. Uh, show this dialog box at startup, leave it as it is. This gives you some useful hints and links to other things. So I'm just going to close it for the time being. So I have changed my desktop. You might be getting a different image or something. So the first thing first, this is my desktop area. This is our panel, which is having certain information. Again, I have played around a bit. So it's showing me certain few other things. So in general, you should get to see this network icon, your battery icon if you're working on a laptop, speaker for audio, a clock and other things. So how do we get started? Of course, on the lower left corner, you can see this icon. 
this is where you will get your menu from. So when you click it, a menu pops up. So let us see what are the things that are available over here. By default, you get your applications divided into certain parts. System has tools and applications with which you will be able to manage and uh, configure your system. Settings are generally related to the appearance and uh, configuration of the desktop and other things. So like over here, uh, this is a display setting. This thing lets you manage the resolution of your display and so on. So if you connect a projector or another monitor to your display, it can be configured from this. Getting back to our menu. Then office, we have an office suit which is called as LibreOffice and it has certain applications which are already installed over here. Okay, so whatever you see as LibreOffice or LibreOffice, some people call it, we have certain things out of which you might be interested in the calc, which is for spreadsheet purpose, your impress for creating presentations and writer for creating documents, the regular ones. Then let's jump into multimedia. I have installed a few other things, but uh, you might uh, see in multimedia the pulse audio and this celluloid and a few other things you might get to see over here. I have installed few utilities for my purpose. In internet, you have your web browser, some chatting tools, mail, if you want to use a mail client, this is Thunderbird mail client is already installed. You have transmission over here for file sharing purpose. In graphics, there are some simple utilities over here. In accessories, you have some generally useful tools like text editor. You might be needing a text editor. There is a USB formatting tool is there image writer tool is there and also your file manager is there. So we'll come to the file manager after some time. So you can just explore these utilities over here. Then of course, when you go to all, you have the list of all the applications. Interesting location is the recently used. Anything that you use recently comes up in this particular location. And over here, you have some settings for your desktop. Directly you can jump into that. Coming back, this is your lock screen. If you want to lock the screen immediately. And this is your logout button from where you can choose what you want to do. You can log out, you can restart, you can shut down, you can suspend your system. Or you can switch user if you have multiple users. I'll just cancel it for the time being. Okay, so let's get back to our menu. So here in the menu, you have this search option over here. So what's the advantage of this is you really don't need to know the name of the application or if you really don't want to get into the trouble of searching throughout this whole thing. You can just type in something. Let's say you are looking for a text editor. So I just type text and things relating to text will show up. So there is a text editor which you can launch. You have LibreOffice Writer. It has some description which has text in it. So this way you can uh, find out related applications very easily. Let us say if I say L E W T R. So you can see it was letter was mentioned in this. So that description matches here. So again, I am getting this application. So this way you can look for uh, an application or utility very fast. Let us say I had shown you earlier, there is a USB formatting tool. So if you say F O R M A T format, so here anything relating to formatting comes up and our USB formatting tool comes up over here. So you can immediately click over here 
and use the USB formatting tool from here. So this is one of the parts that is available in the menu which you can get from here any of the applications very very fast. Another way to launch your applications in a fast manner is by pressing Alt F2 which gives you this application finder. But in this particular case you need to know the name of the application and uh, just typing some description doesn't work usually. So uh, like the name of the application the editor is xed. So if I type xed it comes up and I can select it from here and launch and my text editor comes up over here. So remember Alt F2 gives you this dialog box from which you can launch your applications in another quick manner but this will require you to remember the name of the application. So the next thing that we are going to see in this video is the file manager. So this thing comes inbuilt with a file manager. The icon is provided over here. You can see this over here or you can again search by typing file. So you can see a file manager comes up over here. Fine. Or you can go the long way by going to accessories and the Thorner file manager. Okay. So here this is a file manager which we have and uh, by default the file manager opens your home directory. As I said in my earlier video you will be restricted to work into your home directory. So here it is showing the icon of home but if you click over here you can see it says slash home slash Dexter uh, because this is my login. So all these things that you are seeing over here are actually inside slash home slash Dexter and we will be saving our contents over here and you get a pre-built structure of documents, downloads, music, pictures. So certain directories are already created for you and you can work on it. Creating new directories is simple. Just right click over here and you can say create folder for creating a directory. Okay, there are other options. Zoom in, zoom out, normal size. This is how you want to look at these icons. So uh, those things you can easily uh, explore. How to open any of these directories. Just double click on it. It opens up and you have this back button to go back backwards. On the left hand side you have this view where you can see the devices. These devices, the file system is your whole file system. So what we had discussed earlier file system means root. So here it is showing you structure from root. This is your whole system. If you want to explore you can explore it from here. You don't need to worry because you are logged in as a generic user you will not be able to damage the system. If any other partitions are there, they will show up. If you click on that partition, it will show you the content of that partition. This is my Ubuntu partition, which I had in, I have installed on this machine uh, beforehand. So this is that particular partition. Now coming back to my home directory, this is the area where I can work. So the basic operations which you want to do are quite simple. You can copy something by right clicking it, copy and you can just paste it somewhere. So we have copied the file over here. Again you can right click, you can see the properties, you can set it as a wallpaper, create archive and lots of stuff is here. Interestingly, there are few options like send to, you can send it to some specific location. If you have Bluetooth, it could go to Bluetooth. You could create a link on desktop and so on. By default, the image opens up with the default 
utility that is there but if you are interested in opening it with something else you can say open with or you can select some other application so copying files and other things are the same operations you can say you can press control and you can select multiple files you can do operations on this multiple files directly like this you can drag and put this files somewhere other location so copying moving and other things are easy so 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 this is a file manager and uh, it is named as thoner so this product is thoner which we are using so primarily if you have used any other operating system most of the file managers look similar they will give you the similar facility and functionality so uh, over here this we are using a file manager if you are using some other distribution of linux you will be using some other file manager so important aspect is to look for a file manager so what else now you might be thinking how to use your usb drive pen drive so let's just connect a usb pen drive over here and let's see what happens so as you can see as soon as i have connected a uh, usb pen drive it shows me the usb pen drive over here right now it has automatically also mounted the usb pen drive and it has opened another you can see the file manager over here so in fact if my file manager would not had been open i would have received this particular file manager over here and this is your usb pen drive and this is the content over here of the file uh, of your usb drive so let us say you wanted to copy something into the usb pen drive so you would just go to your location from where you want to copy something you can right click copy and just go back and you can paste it over here so nothing new nothing great in this you can do this on your own the only important thing is once your work is done make sure you eject the pen drive so you can see this eject button over here you can either right click and say eject or you can just click on this button so your pen drive gets ejected now one thing you need to remember is you might have noticed some message coming up over here if you have written some big file or something sometimes it takes time for it so just wait till you get a message of it is clear and that label is removed from this location then only you should physically remove your pen drive otherwise the data may not be written into it okay sometimes you want to do multiple operations one of the other features that is available in your file manager is that instead of opening multiple windows of the file manager you can have a new tab so you have these two tabs and you can switch between those two tabs and if let me see in this first tab i'll open the documents and in the second tab this area is open so if i wanted to copy this i can copy it from here and directly paste it here so you can have tabs it works as good as multiple file managers open for you another interesting facility that the file manager provides is a search facility with which you can search for some files so you just need to right click from the location you want to start searching for from so right click and you can see search over here and in the search box i just have to say the name of the file or something relating to that my underscore or i'll just try saying my let's so you can see files that were starting with my and where they are located you can find it so it's a very interesting facility provided in this particular file manager to search 
any files or directories which are there so you can further explore the file manager for uh, different other aspects but the basic copying copy pasting creating folders or directories and doing the basic work can be very easily handled with this particular file manager i'll stop over here for this video we'll meet in the next video and we will see further exploring of how to configure your desktop and other utilities that are there till that time explore and enjoy your new linux system